What's going on YouTube? Mr. Ferguson back once again. Thank you so much for coming back to dry central North Carolina. Well, technically that's not true. Just dry right here where I live. I did some watering yesterday in the back lawn. I really hate doing it when there's water dumping around all around me, but not here. It's frustrating, but we're going to try to get away from talking about drought and heat. It's all around us. We, we kill, we beat the horse to death. We're still in the middle of it here where I live. I know a lot of you guys and girls got some rain this past weekend. Shut up, crow. But uh, we didn't get it here. So there's some of us now that are in the camp of we're still suffering. Some of you got sweet relief. I really hate crows. But happy early uh, 4th of July. It's my favorite holiday of the year. I love 4th of July. I hate the fact it's on a Thursday. I guess that really it's pretty cool because most people will take off Friday and make it a super long weekend. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for checking in today. And today we're going to go again. We're going to look towards the future of fall. And mainly we're going to talk about seed fitting. What the heck is a seed fitting? Well, when you're playing golf, if you are a golfer, if you're not, I'm going to explain it anyway so you'll know. You get fitted for clubs, right? Because you can buy standard clubs. That's what a majority of sucky golfers like me do. You just buy standard and you just play with the standard and you do the best you can. If you're really into golf and you're really wanting to get better and you're a young teenager or you're getting your kids to play and you want to you want to take them to a Dick's Sporting Goods, a um, Carl's Golf Land, a PGA Superstore. You want them to get fitted for golf clubs. You want to see how they swing the club. The professionals look at how they swing that club. Okay, you need this much loft. You need a higher loft, a lower loft. Uh, you need a more flexible shaft, a more stiff shaft. You get the point, right? They fit the club to the player. So kind of we we so kind of we want to talk about that in the lawn. We want to do a seed fitting. What type of seed do I need for this piece of property in this lawn? We've talked about this in the project lawn, have we not? I've revealed to you guys we're going to be doing Jonathan Green heavy traffic seed. Well, why are you doing that, Mr. Ferguson? Why have you picked that seed for that piece of property? Well, let's look at where it's at. It's in a public location, a church setting, right? It is in a playground environment right around the area of that grass is a playground. So we know what? There's going to be a lot of foot traffic, a lot of kids. It's also right in front of the gym. So we're fitting the seed to the property. So again, it just makes sense, right? It's mainly a fescue mix. It's probably got a little bit of rye, may have just a hair of Kentucky bluegrass in it, but it's made, it's the best grass that I've found of quality because Jonathan Green is awesome quality to put in that area that is a deep dark green because Jonathan Green, man, it is definitely, it's a family owned business. We've talked about that. It's been around for generations and uh, it is a deep dark looking seed of all of the grass seed that I've personally seen. Jonathan Green does have the deepest color without fertilization. That's just my opinion. Uh, so we've talked about that. So the, the, the main point of the video is while we're in the middle of this summer drought, this summer dryness, uh, we talked about, we hit the topic of last video, what happens when this happens? Well, our grass goes dormant, our fescue goes dormant. I've showed you countless times in my lawn, you can even see behind me, there's areas where the grass likes to kind of in the shade, it's, uh, it's not so bad. It's still shriveled up, but it has its color and it's not too bad. The grass that does not have shade, you can see right here behind me. My wife moved the plants here because I had the sprinkler going and she wanted them to get water. But you see everywhere where we don't have shade, you've got the browning because it's constantly day after day, 95 degrees, boom, boom, just heat every day. Where the shady parts, as the sun moves, a lot of this remains shady throughout the day. I noticed my GCI turf in this back area the first couple years didn't like the shade so much. Um, I switched to a shade mix. It does better, that Jonathan Green dense shade mix. So you have to, we've talked about that. So as we thin out right now in the summertime, go ahead and start thinking of, okay, let me do an evaluation of my property. And you need to look at it at multiple uh, parts of the day. What does your shade look like in the morning? What does your shade look like in the afternoon? What does your shade look like in the evening? Mainly in the, uh, what, the midday, right? Because that's when the sun's the hottest. Uh, shade is great in the evening. Shade's great in the morning. But really in the really hot parts of the day, where's the sun not getting through? Okay, well, is your grass doing well there? If it is, then continue with what you're doing. Maybe you just need to continue to mix in the seed you've been using. 
if you're like me and you notice, man, this is really thinning out. Now there's a difference between it thinning out because of lack of water. And if it's getting the water, if you're in a part of the country where you've continued, you're like, Mr. Ferguson, you're in a totally different world than me. I've been getting water for the past all of June. I'm getting rain. I'm good. Well, then if you're looking at your shaded areas and they look kind of like they're struggling, you're looking at disease possibilities or is that seed not really the seed that you put out not really like in the shade so much it needs more sun so these are the things we're talking about it's really dependent on your location so we want to fit our lawn for the proper seed i've tried to do that in the front lawn on past videos we've messed with texas bluegrass it is supposed to be a similar to kentucky bluegrass but really able to maintain high heat which is what we're dealing with right now in North Carolina, but nothing can withstand. As we talked about last video, everything breaks when it has no water over a long period of time. It don't matter what grass it is, it is gonna shrivel up, it's gonna go dormant when it don't get hydration, when it doesn't get water. There is no replacement for water. There is no grass that I'm aware of, unless it's really super expensive that you can put out, besides maybe warm season grass, that, uh, that thrives, right? But we're talking about cool season grass. So just that's kind of the point of the video. Which areas are really struggling in your lawn right now right, to me currently i don't have an area that i'm like oh crap this area may be dead over here i'm gonna really have to seed heavily in this section i'm not there yet in my lawn i'm watching this back section it's really brown it's looking a scary brown i watered it yesterday some of it looks like it came back green some of it don't if it doesn't come back that sucks, but we're going to overseed. I think I'm going to continue with what I've done. I've got the GCI turf type tall fescue. If I do need to thicken up the back parts, I'm still going to maybe look at a sun and shade mix from Jonathan Green or maybe the uh, dense shade mix once again on the back edges. It's done well. It blends in well. As you guys have seen, there's not a major difference. If you stand here in, in May and in March and in the fall and really look at it, you may be able to see some of the Jonathan Green is a little bit darker than the GCI blend. But remember the GCI turf blend, which will have links to Jonathan Green seed. Uh, we'll have links to um, the GCI seed in the comments. If you like the cool blue, if you're wanting to do Kentucky bluegrass, with water rates going up, I do not recommend it because bluegrass requires more water and we don't want to have to have more water in the lawn. We want uh, as much heat tolerant grass as we can. So that's kind of the, the mind process that I wanted to get you geared towards today. Um, looking towards fall, getting your plan together. Are you going to aerate? Are you not going to aerate? What type of seed do we need to go ahead and be purchasing? Because you know, as soon as we start getting in the back to school mode in August, Everybody starts buying seed and maybe you want to go with something off the shelf at Lowe's or Home Depot. That's totally fine. It's your lawn. Do what you want. I would just advise you look at the label. Is there any noxious weeds in that seed or how much weed seed is in it? That means, yes, weed seeds are you're sowing weeds into the lawn. I prefer something that has no weed seeds in it. I'm just and it may cost a little a few pennies more. Um, but uh, you get what you pay for. That's just the way that I go. Um, so I'm looking at GCI turf probably over the entire lawn um, front and back and the maybe GCI turf right here. We may do on this side where as fall comes and as winter comes, this section right here does get more shade, maybe doing some of the shady nooks right there. I'm not sure. So get your mind geared towards fitting your lawn for seed. We'll have links below for Amazon, for GCI turf, for yard mastery, uh, for Jonathan Green, if you're interested in any of the seeds I mentioned that I'm trying and you want to try them with me, the heavy traffic, maybe you have an area, you, maybe you're working at your church um, or a community center or a town hall or whatever it may be. And you're like, you know what? That's a good idea. Let's put that heavy traffic down. People could stomp all over it. It's supposed to be grass that can withstand it. I've never tried it. I'm going to be trying it soon. You guys can maybe, maybe you want to watch this year and maybe overseed with that next year and see how it does for me. Uh, that would be a great idea. But have you thought about this already? Have you already got a game plan together? Have you already got seed in the shed from last year that you just planned on using? Do you plan on just not going seed at all? I'm just can't afford it. Uh, where are you guys at? Comment below. I like the GCI because I believe it has some of the Mountain View cultivars in it. It's a spreading fescue. I like the fact that basically over time, it should thicken up over time with a spreading fescue with some of those cultivars in the GCI turf type tall fescue seed. 
I like that. I think it's a benefit. Why would I not want that benefit in my lawn? So the new blend will have that in there. Same thing with the cool blue with the uh, Kentucky bluegrass. It's got some of those spreading capabilities with the bluegrass, but also with the fescue. Uh, Jonathan Green, I don't believe has went there yet, at least uh, that I'm not aware. So I'm just using their seed again on the back for the shade purposes, but we'll see. We'll announce that. We'll, uh, we'll show you when I start ordering things and we're getting ramped up. Here's all the mess I'm doing for fall uh, aeration and overseeding. So we'll do that video hopefully soon. I'll have I'll start ordering my product somewhere around um, this month, if not the beginning of August. I am going on another Ecuador missions trip um, at the end of July. I'll be gone that entire week. So August is gonna come for me really fast. I've got a uh, golf tournament I'm playing in West Virginia mid-July. So this month is really busy. So anyways, let me know if you guys enjoy Seed Talk in the video. Let me know what your seed thoughts are. Like the video if you enjoy it. We will see you on the next Mr. Ferguson Lawn Care video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.